Hi everyone. Well, in our previous video, we we ended up not going anywhere, but not all our time was wasted because we thought we'd do a bit of bit of maintenance. Because there's one thing for certain: on a boat, you've got to keep on top of it, or all the little bits what deteriorate over time. If you don't if you don't get get them sorted out, then obviously things start to fall apart that's what happens with the boat so maintenance and keeping on top of things is important and in this video I'm going to show you a few things what I did the first part is the fire or our diesel stove we don't have a multi-fuel or a log burner for various reasons you know uh, we don't want to be curtain bag the coal around or lugging logs around or anything like that and we find it much easier and much more reliable to have a, uh, a traditional looking diesel stove to uh, keep us warm and keep the heat consistent I think that's always worked for us we've had we've had multi-fuel but we changed you know we changed to diesel on our previous boat and we've never looked back since so you can have a look at this just show how we clean it cleaning a, a, a flue is very important if you particularly a multi-fuel stove or log burning if you don't clean it regularly the flue way can easily block and that leads to carbon monoxide eventually because the products of combustion cannot cannot get out so you should be cleaning those particular type of fires regularly you know we do ours once a year but it's a diesel and it's a bit different the other ones i would do it at least twice a year and probably more so this is what we did have a look at it and then we'll move on to another piece of maintenance we did i hope you find it informative this we'll start all the bits and pieces now and first of all we do the actual flue itself if you notice because it's a diesel from when we had it the, the boat built it's not got a big collar on like a lot of a lot of uh, boats it's just got this very smart looking uh, stainless steel collar with a cap on so it's all it's all nice and easy So I've took the cap off now and I've got access to the flue using the right type of equipment. If there's one thing I can say, make certain when you're cleaning flues, particularly multi-fuel are a lot worse than this, but get the right type of gear to clean it. Don't try to make, make and mend sort of things. Get proper equipment and they're not dear. This is the exact size of the flue and the right length. And all we do is insert it down and bring it up. Do this a few times and there's not much, I'll tell you. That's quite clean, that. Since we last done it, there's not much in that flue. So it's been ver burning very, very well when we've had it on. That's for certain. Maintenance is so important. Before I do anything, I make certain I've got my brushes. These are quite handy. They'll be able to get in all the nook and crannies to clean everything. So uh, they're waiting to be put into action. Let's have a look. Wowzer. <laughs> Not much there. Brilliant. That's excellent. That shows you how clear the actual flue way itself was. Not bad at all. So we'll get the uh, brushes going and clean everywhere and then I'll hoover it all out. Well, first of all, I don't need that yet. I'll clean that up after. That's part of the, uh, the setup for the burner. If you look there now, there's a bit of soot and a bit of 
bits and pieces round so I'll get that cleaned out and uh, everything should be all right so I think it's uh, it's time to get on with it Now, it's starting to get quite clean. If you can see now, the burner pot's still got a bit of soot on. I'm going to clean that out with my smaller brushes. And uh, that should look pristine then. So, I better get on with that next and uh, we're nearly there. looking good I'm going to clean the uh, the glass now and I'll just show you what we use very simple are you gonna show those magic glass cleaners I am yes <gasps> yes <laughs> so I'll, I'll go and get some of them and we'll make the glass look absolutely perfect again this is brilliant for cleaning the you know the wind the window or the glass not much effort and it doesn't scratch it either looks good to me he looks good to me <laughs> yeah that's not bad Keith. not bad so i'll give that a little clean as well and this goes round inside as you can see the soot on that so i'll be cleaning that in a minute with my little uh, brush and uh, it'll be nearly ready then. That's another good job done. That's ready to go in. Just do with the bits around the door if there's any dust on that. Lovely. Nearly done. Now, these, what are you looking at? Well, these were what, without these, this diesel stove wouldn't work because they, the heat, believe it or not, it's like an attraction and what holds the flame and that. Without these, it's useless. But our original one, the weld went at the top so it's ready to come off completely but rather than try to repair it we bought a new one what's going to go in so I put this together and then we're done so this goes in first that's got to be sat in the right spot if you look now Uh, 
and then this just goes in and it's ready to be lit but if you look carefully inside now that's very clean We've got the fire out of the way. Now on to uh, something else now. Before I do show you a little bit of maintenance what I do, the other thing I'd like to talk about, and it amazes me that not more people have these, but water damage in a boat can cause a lot of problems. You know, condensation's bad enough if you've not got it, you know, if you, if you're unlucky enough to suffer with that but we we have a a decent um, humidifier what keeps it all down and we don't really suffer from condensation but the other thing is is at the bottom of the boat you know uh, underneath your floor if you get water under there and it's undetected it causes rust and mold and things like that and yet, there's easy solutions for it. Only a few pints of beer it costs. And it's just using water sensors. You just put them in position, put the wire and the sensor on the bottom of the boat in several places. We've got, it in, got them in four places. And if any water went underneath, whether it's from a leaking shower, a leaking water tank or something, you know, more dramatic should we say the alarms start going off and we've got a warning without it swishing around underneath so we recommend that to anybody to put water sensors in simple to install and not expensive so that's another little uh, little idea or suggestion we'd make to any boat of that and i know some will be some will have water sensors but uh, it's so cheap to do. Anyway, the next thing what uh, I did, the shower. Now there's different, there's different sorts of pumps on showers. A lot of people have what is known as a whale gulper and it, it just comes out, shoots out outside, keeps going out, the pump pumps it out, which is well and good and plenty of them but I'll tell you what <laughs> if you're moored next to somebody you know in a marina and they have one of them it, oh, it can be so annoying if it's blasting against your own boat thankfully because we have our own separate mooring it never happened to us but loads have gulpers but we prefer uh, a Johnson automatic sump pump and it's nice and easy we, we you know it's installed the water goes into it and as it gets to a certain level, the pump comes on and pumps the water away. All nice and quiet. But you have to maintain it. You know, there's, there's a filter in it. And I regularly, you know, just m made easy access to it. And I take the filter out. You know, it can get clogged up with bits and pieces as showers do. Give it a good clean and put everything back. And it's as good as new. That's that's the way we uh, we like it. Just clean it all up, and away we go. And this next bit of video, I'll just show you what I did. And I hope you uh, enjoy seeing something a little bit different.
Now, another little tip or maintenance, what we do for winter, and all it is, and it does make a difference because you see so many boats where they have the side hatches, you see where the hinges are, rust coming down where, the, where the, it's rusted and it can mark all your paintwork. A simple solution for winter is anywhere you've got hinges outside, just put some Vaseline on, just put it in and leave it and then everything will be all right. And the, once summer comes and, and you know, or spring and it gets hot, you'll see it melt and all the rust bits will be running down the side of your boat and you think, oh, that looks horrible. But it doesn't take a minute to take it off. You just wipe the Vaseline off and everything comes off and you've got no rust on uh, any of your hinges. And we've done that for years and it's certainly a thing what works well. And like I say, in the video, we'll just show you a few bits and pieces on how, how I do it. Simple, but really effective. And now we're on to the final bit of maintenance. Whilst on board, the one thing you don't want to hear coming on, or coming on a lot, is your bilge pump that's at the back of the boat that's where you, you if you have a modern engine that's where everything is or even an older engine you have a pump there what pumps water out if it's starting to fill up a little bit in the bilge now what happened with us is we have what we call it's an automatic bilge but you can do manual um, you can do it manually as well by using a switch what, be, what is known as a, a momentary switch it means it's a rocker switch what clicks on when you press it but it will you can't stay on unless your fingers on there so it's manually doing it but on the other times uh, it has a float in it in the in the bilge pump and if it comes up it makes contact with the electrics and the pump comes on automatically to disperse the water out, out back into the canal. It's a safety thing as well because you definitely don't want to have something what's not working in you, but you know, not having a bilge pump or you'll uh, eventually you'll come a cropper. I do know some people that almost all the bilge is swimming in water of some description and it happens mostly if you have a uh, cruiser style that tends to be a wash if you've not got something at the back to protect when it's pouring down with rain but it's there ours is it is in its own little triangle at the back and it's got a like a plate about 18 inches high so the water would have to get 18 inches high and over over top it to come into the engine area but it's never been like that <laughs> thankfully and it's just uh, normally just uh, an inch or so uh, and that's it because it just drips slowly why am I talking about it well there we were in the boat and what did we hear the bilge pump come on automatically and we thought oh ooh, that doesn't normally happen so I thought I better go and have a look at what's going on so I went and when I got there, I took all the boards off and that and had a look down. There's no water coming out at the, at the side. Very little water in the bilge, you know, in the bilge area, the sump area at the back. I'm thinking, what's this? So I went to the isolation switch and turned it on. Off, sorry. <laughs> when I turned it back on, nothing happened. So I put my finger back on the momentary switch, just held it manually and then let go. And lo and behold, it stayed on and it shouldn't do. So I thought, oh, oh what we got here? At first I thought it might have been that switch. But after a bit of investigation, 
it was actually the automatic bilge pump what had decided it's had enough and it needed replacing so that's what we did what we decided the one what we had in which was when I took it out it was in a bit of a state that was 500 gallons per hour that would work at but I decided to upgrade it to 700 gra uh, gallons per hour it's a lot of water that isn't it but that's us belts and braces so we decided to, re to replace it with a bigger one and upgrade the fuse as well the fuse is in line they're only tiny little ones what you put in and it had to be upgraded from 5 amp to 10 amp which I did as well so I took everything out I forgot to mention a little device I bought didn't cost a lot I think it was about 15 pound a battery operated um, pump water extractor how good was that just put it in put it in a we used a milk bottle turn it on a couple of batteries in it out came any water to make it all a bit easier that they were very good and I, I'm glad I've got one of them now but anyway we work, go back to the installing so I, I took the old one out and it was falling to bits and that the other thing what we've got on it we have a piece of metal because these bilge pumps tend to not be that heavy um, we, we attached them to a piece of metal so it it stayed in one position when we put it in the in the sump area the bilge area where it where it goes so I did all that got that checked got it working and we're back in business it's like I said maintenance there's loads of things on it on a boat you know I've, you see you see people with the woodwork and you see the the laminate and all that because it's never had any varnish on or, or you've just let it wear away all the wood's delaminated or just gone grey things like that and, and maintenance things and if you keep laying it bits by bits go eventually you know it's not uh, it's not that good I think you might have heard a banging noise and I just hit the microphone with my hand sorry about that <laughs> so that's just another part of our ongoing maintenance to keep our boat looking in tip-top condition and I'll probably give you a few more uh, hints and tips in a future one but that's done and now we're, we'll be going home or going to our cottage and um, we'll be coming back at a later date because we're determined that we're going to be out boating because we we've missed it this year we've just not done as much as what we expected so i'm certainly once we've got all our uh, you know our appointments our our jabs for flu our jabs for covid sort out the family and all that we'll come back with no appointments ahead or anything and we're going to take a chance i think and we'll get out there and see what happens but for now, thanks for watching this little, should I say, maintenance video. And uh, we hope to see you very soon. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and well. And all I say is, see you next time. Ta-ra!